Hi, this is National Chess Master R. Rats at chess.com. I'm continuing my series of the uh, games from the match, my video lessons group versus Carpe Diem. And as noted, anybody that gets a point and a half or better will have videos of their games made. And if they only win one, we have to win the match and I'll make a video of their win. So everybody's encouraged to go out and do their best. Uh, naturally, in, in any team match, we always have players that move too quickly. Okay, I'm going to criticize you. You're not going to improve your chess game if you play this way, okay? I mentioned this t countless times. Online chess, it should be called correspondence chess, not turn-based or online. Correspondence chess is a way where it's all pointed out in my video lessons program where you take your time. You look up the openings, you do research, you play over the variations, see what kind of... Uh, lines you're comfortable with and then start start playing then you get a chance in the middle game to sit down for 30 minutes three hours whatever and analyze the position and you really learn a lot about chess when you do this and when you finally reach the end game you're actually allowed to consult end game books and if you have good end game collection uh, like I do you can learn really learn a lot about innings and you maximize your time again it's all pointed out in my video lessons group uh, in my uh, video lesson program number one if you play too quick you're gonna lose the number one reason people lose chess games is they move too fast now sometimes you'll win but you're gonna lose more than more than you'll care to and most importantly you're not going to learn okay And if you're on a team and I do this when I make league videos for team 45 league over at uh, ICC I criticize players that move too fast and there I give a game of the week prize or somebody gives a game of the week prize, and I make a video of the winner. Guess what? If the guy moved too fast, I hey, I'm not going to make a video of your game. You don't get a reward. Uh, sorry, you you know you're not doing yourself any favor. You're not doing your teammates any favor. Uh, this is not a substitute for over the board play. Just because your opponent happens to be log, logged on doesn't mean you trade. Now the, the level of moves here was pretty good, but naturally because both sides are moving too quick, the blunders come. Let's have a look. Okay, so everything is hunky-dory here, fine. Seems like White's playing kind of slow. He shut his bishop in. As I said, it was just, uh, you know, reasonable games, reasonable moves. Uh, a couple strategies come up here. We'll see them in just a moment. Okay, now the defining point is, this is the white pawn chain. This is the black pawn chain. The method, the, the strategic method to do now is you want to attack in the direction your pawn chain points. That means White's break should be e5, and Black's break should be b5, okay? That's what you want to do. But Black's able to do his first, but the game's still pretty level. Uh, white develops a piece, and Black develops. And now, this is a good move because it forces Black to give up the bishop pair. Although, uh, the, the light-squared bishop of White's may not have a lot of scope, uh, it doesn't support the e5 break as much, but because Black is playing too quick, he blunders. And now if you look, uh, where's this bishop going to go? Uh, it's trapped, e4. And black must lose material, okay? And they play a few more moves, and uh, white's just finding good moves here. Knight takes, pawn takes, temple the queen, and black decided to resign. He never had time to take this pawn with check, and eventually white will grind out a win. Okay, so much for that game. Uh, let's go on to the other one. I think I have it here. No, gotta, I don't have it there. That's not the right one. Cancel that. Here it is. Okay, select all. You can't see it off the screen, my video capture. Okay, this, this was a case of a premature resignation. Perhaps Black was, you know, Mr. Hawk uh, Kazai was upset because he was losing the other game and chose to give up this one against Calix. And this is on board 81, if I didn't mention that. Uh, I thought the play was reasonably even here. Uh, you know, they're, they're playing good moves. Uh, maybe they're taking five minutes on the move. At least if they're taking five minutes, they're thinking, they're thinking a little bit. But you can do so much more if you'll spend 30 minutes on a move. You know, it's a great way to... You don't want too many games going either. Uh, so anyway, they're just swapping off stuff. And I think the game is pretty even. Uh, now, let's see. Black, White has the bishop pair, but uh, Black's got a couple of good active knights. Uh, the bishop doesn't really have targets. 
in the, pawn, the white pawn structure. Now white's putting pawns on the same color as bishop. Not a good idea. Uh, now there goes the bishop pair and the advantage thereof. But white just picks, or black just picks up a pawn. Uh, Counter attack that. And if you're going to be in an ending down a pawn, you want it to be in a rook and pawn ending. But right now, black's not or white's not down a pawn yet, but he soon becomes one. See, what's what's this do? What's he doing here? Uh, black is for choice if if rook e2, but you know maybe maybe white should have, maybe rook e5 is wrong. What what about rook e2 right away? Okay, this comes for, again from moving too fast. This will either force white to uh, succumb to a very passive rook, in which case this pawn is a target, or uh, you know, this rook is going to remain active on the seventh rank. And let's see, what can white do? White can't even come down here because, whoops, I mean, right, wrong arrow, whoops, uh, there's the uh, the back rank mate. So rook e2 is a stronger move, and you know, white should have very, very likely could have had a had a drawn, drawable position. Here. I'll explain that in just a moment. But the, the the culprit here move too fast. Okay, you're moving too fast. You will not improve your chess. And I'm you know making a video of every game, but with these ones that come in when you played quick, I'm going to let you have it. I'm not impressed. Okay, impress me by slowing down and showing me a nice game that uh, went 40, 50 moves uh, where you took two, three days every move. Okay. Uh, anyway. Rook e2 was a better move. Uh, but white, black is still for choice here. And now he gives up the pawn. But you see, if you're going to be down a pawn in the ending, you want it to be a rook and pawn ending. And now white does have an active rook in compensation. Uh, that's better than... than this is, means white's done better than what black could have allowed with rook e2. And uh, now rook b5 and rook d7 and d5. And white chose to resign here. But, you know, he's, he's got good chances. He's rooks on the seventh rank. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's do some quick analysis. Okay, king here. Whoops, it's white. It's black, white's move. Let's get the king into the center. King here, king up. Okay, now let's chase the rook. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go park over here. Okay, I'm going to put my keep my rook on the seventh rank. Uh, at least this rook is free now. Uh, but how free is it? It's guarding a pawn. Uh, you have to consult rook and pawn endings, but practice will show. I think white has great drawing chances, but white wouldn't have had any drawing chances whatsoever had black played rook e2. Okay, so you got lucky against a good player that takes his time. You're going to get bit, and you're going to get bit hard. And then if you go over the game, if you even bother to go over the game, are you going over your games? Are you studying them like I say? So it's all in my video lesson 001. Uh, study your games. Find Find better moves, but white's white's toasted here. Okay, uh, the black rook is just too active. Okay, thanks so much for your time, and have a great day.